Welcome one and all to the Jim Masters Show Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series. Your host, Jim Masters, here. We've got a very special guest joining us from California, Wendy Lou Lee. You know, of course, as baby Grace Ingalls on the celebrated and beloved television series, Little House on the Prairie. And she's going to be joining us here exclusively on our program, the Jim Masters Show. Everybody loves Little House on the Prairie. Do you remember when she played Baby Grace? <laughs> oh boy, she was absolutely perfect in that role. But of course, she's all grown up now and she's got a story to tell, a very moving and inspiring story about her life and a new book called Red Tail Feathers, Dare to Discover the Beauty of Grace. Uh, our very special guest, uh, Wendy Lou Lee, joining us, actress and author, coming to us again from California. We'll talk, of course, about all things Little House on the Prairie. There you go, Melissa Gilbert. Now, you may remember, for those of you who are Little House on the Prairie fans, and we know we have a lot, uh, Karen Grassley was with us here on the Jim Masters Show. You can see that uh, archived as well. Yeah. And um, Allison Arngrim, who played Nellie Olson, was with us. And several of the gang from Little House on the Prairie were guests on the Jim Masters Show series. So you can see those episodes archived on our show. What a cutie, huh? <laughs> There she is, and uh, really, really fantastic. It's an honor and a pleasure to have her here. We're going to talk about the new book and her life and all the great things that she's been doing ever since you saw her on the big screen on Little House on the Prairie, which, of course, ran for many years on NBC. My pleasure to uh, welcome her to the show. I hope you'll join us coming to us again from California, Wendy Lou Lee is here. Wendy, welcome to the show. It's an honor, privilege, and pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Jim. So good to be with you. My pleasure. So you're in California, and how is the weather? Oh, uh, well, I'm by the beach, so it's nice. it's not hot here. It's, you know, very mild. It's not like Southern California. Very, you know, 68-ish, almost 10 months of the year, so... <laughs> <laughs> now you've got a really busy schedule. You and I were talking about our busy schedules. I, I'm running around, you know, we are working in these industries, you know, full well, it calls upon us all the time, especially television and radio and entertainment and all. And uh, being an author as well, the book signings and I got a lot of travel coming up, right? Yeah, we are busy this fall with um, Little House events. Uh, we are all over the place. So it all begins next weekend and goes pretty much through December. So we are busy, busy, busy. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to be crisscrossing the country, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. That's amazing. Well, congratulations on everything. The book I know is really it was a labor of love for you, right? Tell us about Red Tail Feathers and and why you wanted to share this very important and inspirational book. Well, Red Tail Feathers kind of was born from a very hard experience with a brain tumor. And yeah. it all just kind of happened after my surgery and my husband and I were not so much on the same page as can happen after brain surgery. And a little bird came into my life with red tail feathers and it just changed my perspective and had me on this journey to find grace and to see the good all around you in every chapter of life. And so I went back through my whole life and attempted to find grace in all of my stories. And there's good stories and there's hard stories and everything in between. So that is Red Tail Feathers. It does include, obviously, some stories from Little House, but then a lot that are just me as a normal person, as a daughter and a mom and a sister and uh, a friend. So Wonderful actress, Jesus follower too, and brain surgery survivor. That's the key, right? Because there could be a lot of people watching who are going through things in their lives, brain surgery or otherwise. And the fact that you're a survivor and you're telling your story and you're sharing the inspirational nature of it is such a, an incredible thing. And you're, you're compelled to do it, right? It's in the essence of who you are to want to lift people up. 
Yes. Yes. When you go through something hard, you want to inspire people, encourage people to keep walking so that they can go through it too. Yes, that's right. Exactly. You know, also, of course, Little House on the Prairie, a beloved uh, series. You and I were talking before we uh, started the program that it's amazing how people still talk about, revere, and love Little House in the Prairie and the Waltons as well. And I know you guys, like you mentioned, have done some joint events together. Does it still surprise you, um, this love affair that people have for the iconic series Little House on the Prairie? And why do you think that is, Wendy Lynn? Uh, it doesn't surprise me because Little House is just like no other show. Um, I mean, I'm not going to talk bad about the Waltons. I don't, but there's just, I, I just have this affinity for Little House. Maybe it's because I was on Little House, but yeah. um, I think people are just crave that those family values, this loving, heartwarming stories. And, and also it, it helps that Little House is on TV every day and, you know, yes. 40 countries. I mean, you just kind of can't get away from it. I think that, uh, you know, Amazon prime and all these, you know, up TV and in INSP network, they, they just made it easier for fans to watch little house in the prairie. And we have this whole new generation of fans, which is just incredible because, you know, the grandmas made their daughters watch it. And now the granddaughters are watching it. And there's, you know, little nine-year-olds having little house in the prairie birthday parties. So it's, it's incredible. <laughs> now, of course, you were a child, but uh, what do you recall from being on set and just working with these iconic actors and actresses and working with the crew and being on set, um, you know, in that atmosphere, that created atmosphere? It must have been really exciting. Um, Little House was amazing. And I was very small and I can't take all the credit for baby grace because I shared the role with my twin sister. So right. Brenda and I shared the role of baby grace. And um, that is very common on uh, television, especially little house in the prairie. There are three sets of twins on little house in the prairie. So, um, but it was amazing. I can't think of a bad interaction or a, memory that wasn't amazing on little house. I mean, except for that, you know, they made me cry all the time. You know, Michael Landon, um, put pepper in my oatmeal one day so that I would <laughs> have a fit on screen and it, it worked really well. So <laughs> <laughs> pepper and a fit on screen. I couldn't imagine a little behind the scenes secret there. That is, uh, that is unique. <laughs> well, there's this episode where they want all the women like are striking against the men kind of. And mm. so they want, um, they want it to be that like the men can't handle the children at home. And so yeah. they put pepper in the oatmeal so that it appears that, you know, they're just not able to, <laughs> to take care of the kids. And, uh, that's kind of one of my famous, famous episodes. <laughs> that is funny. Uh, do you have a favorite episode? Is there one that you've watched back and maybe your family or friends have watched with you? And there's a couple that are just your personal favorites. Wendy Lou? Yes, I have two favorites. And one is Christmas and the Never Forgot from season eight. And obviously it's the Christmas episode. So it's just so fun. And I remember this day because Brenda and I were fighting over who was going to lick the candy cane. <laughs> And I did not win. Um, I got to fall asleep on Ma's lap, sadly. <laughs> um, we also, I remember we, that day there was snow on the ground and we gathered this snow. It was like these little tissue paper kind of flecks of snow yeah. that they had, you know, blowing across the soundstage. And we gathered this little box and we took it home with us. <laughs> we still have it. <laughs> you still have it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> still have it. So cool. Um, my other favorite episode is Dance With Me. And it's from season five. I am a very tiny little baby then. But I have this scene with Ray Bolger. And oh, he's the yeah. scarecrow from Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz. Yeah. And he played the role of Toby No. And I just love this episode. And I actually named my son Toby after Toby No on Little House of the Prairie. So mm -hmm. those are my two favorite episodes. 
You know, we were talking too before uh, we started the program that I think people are also craving these kinds of shows because of the family values, the positive nature. You know, there were trials and tribulations that happened on these episodes of all these iconic series, but they seem to sort of work it out with love and caring and understanding, whether it's The House of the Prairie, The Waltons, other shows that just have this sort of warmth and Little House in the Prairie, just every time you heard the theme music and you're running down, <laughs> running down in the field of the flowers in the show open. Um, how many times did you have to do that? What do you mean? Running down the flowers? Yes. And that little, that part wasn't where, me. That was the other, that was Carrie. So that was her. Right. Wow. So, so in the beginning of the very, the beginning you of the show, the little... it's just the, it's just the girls that are, you know, already alive in season one. So I don't show up till season four. So right. I am not running down the hill. <laughs> 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 That's little Carrie and she's adorable and she does fall and it's actually, she falls and they cut it. And then they wanted her to do it again because they liked it so much. Oh, no. And she wouldn't do it again. So they have the other twin do it. And she basically does the second half where she gets up and does the rest of the run. So they did have to do that twice. <laughs> did they? So there's a little behind the scenes for you there. Um, it's really fascinating. Do you guys stay in touch? The two of you? Yeah. Oh, my huh? sister and I, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you're, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. You know, it's kind of like the Olsen twins a little bit too, right? I mean, they had them on, was a full house and they would interchange. There was a couple of series where there were interchangeable uh, children and you never knew, you know, necessarily which was the one, but it made sense too, because you couldn't be on set constantly, right? Yeah, the hours are just so short with, yeah. um, with children, especially under the age of, you know, two or three. Um, we could only work about four hours a day, and two yeah. of those hours are in the dressing room. <laughs> they don't right. really count. So two <laughs> hours on a soundstage just goes by in a flash. So when you use twins, you get double the money, you know, or double the time for, the <laughs> for right. yeah. So four hours instead of two hours, it makes a big difference for um, filming and making the ease of making a television show. So, Do you stay, uh, does the cast stay in touch? Obviously, you stay in touch with your sister, but do you uh, stay in touch with the cast as well? Yes, and it's getting, gotten easier and easier because we're doing all of these Little House events. So um, I was just talking with Allison yesterday. I was on her show yesterday and was like, all right, well, we'll see you next week, you know? So yes, we have so much fun. Um, not every cast member is involved in the um, events. You know, some people don't want to be, but there is a core of us, probably about six to eight of us that see each other very, very often. And it is so much fun to be with them. What is it like when people come up to you and they tell you how much that series and your involvement in the series as Baby Grace and, of course, sister as well, uh, what it means to them or meant to them and how much they love the series and the characters? That must make you feel pretty good, huh? Yeah, it's incredible because some people say, you know, you raised me. Your show raised me. Your show saved me. Even sometimes your show was the only safe place in my life. Like things like that. Um, yeah. Um, Charlotte Stewart, who played Miss Beetle, um, she was the school oh. teacher. And you know how many people come up and say, I became a teacher because of you. And yes. she's like, oh my goodness. Yes. So there's just so much. It means so much to so many people. Charlotte Stewart was a guest on our show as well and extraordinary, right? And I know you keep in touch with her. Yeah. Yes. When we travel, we're roommates together. So we actually stay in the same hotel room together. She's one of my dearest, sweetest friends. So. And she's been very open and real and authentic mm -hmm. about sharing her story and the ups yeah. and downs of life and in the entertainment industry, which is very empowering and very inspiring, right? Yeah. Yeah. She's amazing. <laughs> So um, you mentioned, of course, you know, the brain tumor and the surgery and all. Um, 
Tell us about how that trajectory sort of, you know, changed things for you a little bit, but how you were able to come out of it um, probably with an even, you already had a deep sense of life and humanity and caring and, you know, a, a wonderful foundation and, and background, but how did it sort of solidify that for you? What are some of the things that you learned about yourself, your own persistence and stamina and uh, can-do attitude that is very motivationally inspiring for other people, which I know is part of your overall story and a beautiful one at that, Wendy? Well, brain surgery is just was super hard and we all live through things that are very hard and we get to this point where sometimes we just can't do it on our own. And so my story is really one of kind of raising that white flag and saying, I need help. And for me, I'm a person of faith. And so mine was just surrendering to God and saying, I need help, you know, and that is really what helped me to overcome and to keep walking and to not lose hope, to believe that um, everything was going to be okay. And even if it wasn't going to be okay, um, as far as like my recovery, I was just trusting that grace, the goodness, the goodness of God was going to get me through, get my family through. Um, yeah, it was really about surrender. Yeah. You know, I, I love what you said, how you called upon your faith and having the love of family around you. That's very important in life, right? To have a foundation, to have, because life, as we know, as we've seen the last few years, can get really crazy and unpredictable. And, and if you don't have like a network of strength around you at times where you don't feel so strong, it could go in the wrong direction, but you, you surrounded yourself with love of those loved ones and this deep commitment to your faith, which not that I'm sure like we all do from time to time, you didn't question once in a while, why uh -huh. me, what happened here? We all question that God, yep. why? But, um, it still is what gets you through. Right. And for you, you're, you're living proof of that. Yeah. Yeah, we had definitely have questions. I, <laughs> yeah. if you don't have questions, you're probably not breathing. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I think is terrific about your memoir too. It's very uplifting, as I mentioned, and about it's really about finding the grace of God in every chapter of life as you have, and it's got candor and insight, and you you really take us through your early days in show business to these life changing events before. Little House on the Prairie. T were you doing other things, commercials, different things, or was Little House on the Prairie the big first thing for you? Tell us about that. Um, yes, Little House was the first thing because we were pretty much cast at about six months old. So we didn't, we weren't in Hollywood before that. It was kind of a fluke or maybe a, you know, just a lucky straw that we drew. Um, my, my grandmother was friends with, um, the casting director, Sue McRae and, um, Kent McRae, the executive producer. So they were friends and they just couldn't find a baby grace. And they were talking about it one day. And my grandmother, of course, was like, wait a minute, what about my daughter, my granddaughters? And so, you know, just showed a picture to, to Sue and Sue was like, Oh my goodness, I think they'd be perfect. And of course she shows the picture to Michael Landon and we just get to go in and meet him and it took about three minutes playing with us on the floor. And he said, I had, these are my girls. <laughs> and that was so, it. We were pretty much offered the job on the spot. So, so, so he was the deciding factor for you. Wow. Oh, well, I yeah. think Michael yeah. was a deciding factor on everybody, honestly. On all of it, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he, he called the shots. <laughs> he had a vision for that show and, of course, that other beloved series, Highway to Heaven, mm -hmm. that everybody has loved as well. Um, how cool it, was it to be around the animals and just that whole atmosphere wearing these period costumes? I mean, again, you're a child, but... Do you recall some of the feeling of it? It was kind of cool. Did you feel like you were, you know, it was playtime, a playground, or would you say the set was, was serious and there was work that had to be done? 
Oh, well, the, the set wasn't serious at all for us. It just felt like <laughs> playing every day. So yeah. we had to decide, okay, do we like play with the animals? Like with the, you know, the cows, especially were super fun because, you know, and, or do we like go on the tree swing or do we play in Bandit's doghouse? Because that was our most <laughs> favorite place was in Bandit's doghouse. And we have pictures of us like poking our heads out of, of the doghouse. Um, it was just incredible, uh, an incredible place to grow up. Um, maybe one of my favorite memories, like on location when we're out at Big Sky Ranch was lunchtime because we oh, yeah. kind of all ate in this big barn like thing and all the cast and the crew. And it was like this big family reunion every day at lunch. And we just, I can remember sitting there, um, very vaguely, of course, but, uh, just an incredible experience for me. I wish I had more memories, but my mom really has done a fantastic job of filling in those blanks for me. I'm asking her questions all the time. Like I could not write the book without her because I'm like, okay, mom, when this was happening, what was that like? And how did you meet Michael Landon? And what did it look like? And what if, you know, so I really kind of use her memories um, combined with my memories and then also just watching the show for ever and ever kind of becomes this kind of multi-layered account of my experience. Which is really beautiful having that. And uh, when you watch the episodes now, seeing it as an adult, what is that feeling like for you as well? Again, you were a kid, so you can't remember every aspect of it um, deeply, but you remember, of course, doing it. What is it like watching it now as an adult? I mean, you guys were fantastic. Uh, kudos to you. <laughs> it's so fun to watch it. Um, of course, we watched it with my both of my kids all the way through. And um, I still watch it every single week because I, I jump on and do a live video every week. And we talk about one episode. And I kind of give my, you know, my two cents. And if I remember anything or, you know, most of the time it's I'm not in it. <laughs> but um, yes, I love watching Little House. It's amazing. It's always good. There's always a lesson. There's always something that leaves you deep in your heart to think about and ponder and try to just live better. Now the book starts with a red tailed bird camouflaged by a shrub, right? Tell us about that. Yeah. So that was that experience is about a week after brain surgery. And my husband and I are sitting in my surgeons, the, the office building of my surgeon. And we're going for our like, you know, post-op, appointment. And mm, it's really complicated. I'm not always thinking clearly right after brain surgery. And so we're kind of not in the best conversation. And there's this little bird and it's sitting there in this tree. And there's kind of like, you can barely see it because it's just hidden. And I'm like, do you see that bird? And my husband's like, what are you talking about? You know? And then all of a sudden this bird flies out and it lands on the side mirror of my husband's, you know, the car. And we're just like staring at it. And then all of a sudden it kind of turns around and there's these red tail feathers. And it's like this, what have I missed? You know, and I just started, that was like the first moment of thinking, I think I have missed grace all along. Like maybe if I look back at my life, maybe I will see what I couldn't see before. Mm. So that's, mm. that's the whole thing about the red tail feathers. How beautiful is that, huh? To be able to uh, describe it and share it in that way that people can connect with and, and, you know, sort of make their own. Um, and it's a memoir too. So you're, you're open and you're real about your life, which I think is fantastic. Um, it's really a reflective journey on discovering God's grace and all of life's circumstances and challenges. And it's again, very empowering for those who may be going through themselves. It also reminds us, doesn't it, Wendy, to, to keep our eyes wide open so we can recognize God's goodness as we dare to discover the beauty of grace around us. Sometimes we're so busy in our lives, getting everything done, 
you know, checking all the boxes, doing everything we have to do, maybe always pleasing everybody else, but we don't see that all around us, God's grace is right there, right? How, how do we, what are some ways that you've recognized it and, and why is that so important? And it's such a, an essential part of your book. Yeah. Um, I think we just miss it. We miss it because we're, we're busy. We're distracted by the hard things in our life. We think that the hard things can't have anything good about them. And so we just try to move past them instead of looking back and, um, finding, finding the good, because there's always good, even in the most horrific situations, there's some good. There's someone who came to comfort you. There's someone who walked with you. There's, um, a beautiful new opportunity that happened because of this. There's a new, you know, my, I share the story in my book about when my, um, my dad passes away, my stepdad, and it, it's kind of a, terrible, horrific story because I'm with him and I can't save him. And it's just really, really hard. And then I realized that, you know, I had to let go of my stepdad, Lanny. And if I would have, if I wouldn't have been able to let go of him, my, my new stepdad would have never come into my life. I have another, another dad, you know, so many dads. Um, and there's just this beautiful thing that sometimes when we look back, we see, oh, maybe that's why it happened. Or maybe that's the good that came out of this. You know, my brain tumor, if I wouldn't have had the brain tumor, I would not be doing what I am doing now. There's no way. It gave me so much confidence to share my story that I just didn't think I had a story. And so I think there's just, there's good if you are willing to look for it. So how did that come to pass? Was it where people were saying to you, uh, Wendy, you have a story here. This is an inspiring story. You've got to share the story. Or did something click in for you where you realized, you know, this really is a story and people, you know, know me from this series and they might have an understanding of the fact that sometimes life isn't always perfect and we go through ups and downs and, you know, we work in these industries where things are presented a certain way, but you're real people, you have feelings and you, you know, care. And um, tell us about sort of that uh, decision to want to write it and share it with us. Cause you get very personal. Yeah. Um, well, I will say is, it was about three months after my surgery and I'm walking on the beach in Santa Barbara, California, because that's where I had my surgery and, you know, having another scan. And I just felt this overwhelming, um, confirmation that I was supposed to write a book. And this book started as a memoir right after those, th that, that three months period. But, um, slowly it shifted into the devotional that I published four years ago. And that was really, it took over. Um, and as soon as that devotional was published, I jumped right back to the memoir because this is the book that I. And that's the dreamt. devotional there, right? Yes. Yes. So, but the, the memoir Red Tail Feathers was really the book that my heart wanted to write from the very beginning. And God was kind of like, okay, hold on. They're not quite ready for that yet. Um, we're going to do this devotional first. <laughs> And you can get back to that later. And I'm glad because I had time to really grow as a person and also as an author so that this book could be, um, I could do it, do the story justice. Because um, at the beginning, I kind of didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. To be completely honest, I had never written anything. And so um, the devotional was really just getting my feet wet. And um, it was this beautiful opportunity that was placed before me. So. What was that like doing a Prairie devotional? I mean, what, what sort of spurred that opportunity for you? And again, that's another, we're showing it because we want people to be able to go to uh, your website and get this as well and, uh, or Amazon. Um, tell us about this one too, while we're here. Yeah. Well, it's actually kind of a, it, it, 
it was birthed out of fail failure. <laughs> yeah, which um, a lot I, of things are in life, you know. Yeah. Yes, they are. So I was at a writer's conference basically pitching my memoir, and it was not going anywhere, to be honest with you. Yeah. And um, I met someone who was a Little House fan randomly, and she was a acquisitions editor for devotionals for HarperCollins. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is like the big guns, you know? And I'm thinking, oh, and, I, and she said, I wish I could help you with your memoir, but you know, I work on devotionals. And I was like, I have an idea. <laughs> and so they say, when you go to a writer's conference, you're supposed to have like your, your work in progress. And then you're supposed to have a back pocket project. So this was my back pocket project. And I said, well, actually I have an idea for a devotional. And she was like, tell me. And I kind of told her I wanted to write a devotional based on quotes from the show, like actual quotes from individual episodes. And she loved the idea. And she said, do you have any samples? And I was like, uh, no, <laughs> And I said, but I could write you some, but I could write and you some. Yeah. And so she like gave me her card and said, write me three samples. And I totally want to publish your book. And I was like, wow. So it was, it definitely just put my memoir on hold and um, gave me time to, you know, develop. Yeah. You know, I think it's a beautiful story and, and because it's all so tied together, the devotional with a memoir, with your being so open and, and authentic and expressive about your life. And again, people who know, um, some of their favorite performers from television series, from movies, from music, from stage, sometimes don't realize that they have things that uh, occur in their lives that, you know, uh, are things that sometimes we all go through. And the fact that you are so gloriously open and you're sharing your love of God and of Jesus and, um, you know, you're celebrating life in the way that you do. Um, I think it's a beautiful thing. What has the reaction? I know because this is hot off the presses. What and congratulations on it, Wendy Lou. But what what's been the response thus far for those of you who know you personally who've read it and know some of the story, and those who have been fans of you and Little House in the Prairie who are starting to read it as well? Well, I guess I would start with maybe my mom. She started reading it and there's a chapter about her dad, who is my grandpa. And she said, Wendy, you just brought him back to life. And it was like the best compliment she could have given me because that's what I really try to do is just stick you right in the story um, so that it's almost like you are living my life, like discovering it as I discover it. It's trying to make it almost like stepping into a a movie in in a sense um and then letting you kind of come to your own decision about grace you know it's really not telling you what to think or what to do it's just saying this is what happened and like how does it how does it land for you you know so um fans have they love it of course because Fans love anything that's about Little House in the Prairie. <laughs> They're kind of an easy audience to win over. <laughs> they really <laughs> do, honest. don't they? They just, <laughs> yeah. they can't get enough. All yeah. these years later, they still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. does, does that tickle you? It's got to, huh? It's so fun. I I can't, I, I love my Little House fans. They are totally my crew of people. So um, they are near and dear to my heart. So... <laughs> Now, uh, for those watching who know you again from the role of Baby Grace, uh, tell us about a few of the other things that you did after Little House in the Prairie. Some may just know you from Little House in the Prairie, but of course, life continues beyond the series. Well, I didn't do a lot in Hollywood. Um, we So Little House ends, and our very first audition is for McDonald's. Um we didn't know who Ronald McDonald was. Right. <laughs> We'd never eaten at McDonald's. And so when they showed us the picture of Ronald McDonald with, you know, the red wig and the, we were scared. Yeah, <laughs> we, I would imagine. we didn't get yeah. that role. Um, 
so then our first commercial was for a bank and it was just a random bank of Texas. We had a one day shoot and my mother was pregnant with my little sister. Um, it wasn't just me and my twin sister, but also my older sister, Michelle. And it was this long, not terrible day, but long for my mother. And also just her realizing that a commercial is so different than Little House on the Prairie. And the atmosphere on Little House on the Prairie was so wonderful. And she began to realize that it was not something she wanted us to do. And so we got in the car and she called her agent and we were done. We basically graduated from acting and started kindergarten. And that was it. <laughs> 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 it's amazing how that is, right? Uh, have you done things uh, independent of each other within the industry? Um, no. Besides, yeah. we literally moved away from Hollywood. We grew up as normal kids. You know, we did every talent show and every church musical. <laughs> um, but no, we didn't do anything. And it was 23 years after the show ended that we were reunited with the cast and we started traveling with the cast. And since then that that's all we've done. And it's wonderful. Yes. You know, I could, I can hear it and see it in your eyes because a lot of times there are stories where when you are a character in a series that runs for a period of time, you could either be typecast or just all of the uh, temptations that are out there sort of come your way. And there are stories where sometimes, you know, it doesn't work out in, in the right way for some of the child actors. So I think, again, you had loved ones and God and, and family watching over you guys, making sure that you had experiences like that. But all you know, being on Little House on the Prairie and commercials and things, but you also had a real childhood with the love of family and faith around you. Um, so you didn't have those opportunities to have the kinds of temptations that come at you in Hollywood and elsewhere that sometimes other kids have unfortunately um, seized, right? You, you were, they created a wonderful, loving environment for you, which when you, look back and reflection was a plus. Yes. And I say that my mom made the best decision she could have. And it was a decision, not just for Brenda and I, but for the whole family, because it would have virtually been impossible for her to pull it off. Unless, you know, she had a full-time nanny taking us everywhere. So it was really a decision for the whole family which is terrific. Do you have any thoughts about or desires to go back into it? <laughs> um, <laughs> I love that laugh. <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you that I'm like, I think I'm, I don't know if I would, I don't even know if I would enjoy it. I think I am so spoiled on little house people <laughs> and just hanging out with the cast members. I just, my whole, my life is so full and so rich with these wonderful, um, relationships. I just, I just want to do this for as long as I can, you know? Um, you yeah. See, you see more books coming your way and do you also see any work, you know, a lot of people they'll do a Ted talk or they'll do sort of motivational speaking and coaching things of that nature through the experiences you've had a taste of Hollywood and, and the celebrity world, but then I've also had a, a, you know, supportive, loving family life, uh, which is a terrific dichotomy of two different worlds that sometimes are opposing one another. Do you see any, uh, another book and do you also see, opportunities to do motivational speaking and um, coaching, things of that nature as well, Wendy Lou? Well, um, I I don't know about another book. I'm just, just trying to barely get this one off the ground. Yeah. So um, we'll take that one, one step at a time. Um, I do speak at women's retreats for churches. I'm doing a like 
fundraiser dinner for a re a, like an operation read program in Indiana later this year. So I am doing some speaking. I, I wouldn't call myself a, um, like a Bible teacher. I'm more of a, a speaker of stories really is, uh, that's what I would call myself, a speaker of stories. Um, so, but I love hanging out with, you know, anybody and meeting new people and encouraging them to just keep putting one foot in front of the other when you reach hard times, you know, cause we're all gonna, we're all gonna um, experience those. So, yeah. That's true. Exactly. What was the writing process like for you in writing this book? Um, you know, some people will say things like, well, you know, Jim, uh, the hardest part for me was getting started, getting those first words on paper, getting that momentum, getting, you know, the steam rolling. Uh, others have said, well, it's really knowing when to end, when to cap it off, when to put the last period on the sentence and say, I'm good with it. Okay, that's good. Um, um, I could walk away, maybe do a couple of rewrites, things of that nature, especially when it comes to something as personal and deep as a memoir. And then a couple of people have actually said, which I thought was surprising, but it's fascinating, how they felt the middle was the hardest part for them. They knew the beginning. They knew how they wanted to end it, but it was filling it. It was bridging the beginning and the end that they found to be interesting in the writing process. What was it like for you? Um, writing this book was like a big kind of therapy session. Yeah, cathartic, right? <laughs> um, and really just deciding where I could see grace throughout my life and trying to make sure that not every chapter was hard and sad. I'm um, having some light chapters in there. Um, there's a story in the book about this boyfriend who sent me something and it all turned into maggots in my college mailbox. <laughs> um, so, you know, there's you some ex-boyfriend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ex-boyfriend. Um, so, you know, it was really about, uh, brainstorming, uh, chapters. And then the hardest part was writing them so that it was like an active voice and mm. feeling like you're actually right there. Not me telling you about something, but you felt like it was unfolding before your eyes. So that was the challenge, I think. Um, and then for also a memoir, how to tell your story and, you know, encourage people to do what you're doing, but don't tell them to do it. <laughs> Let them want to do it without you even having to say anything. I don't know if that makes sense, but that was really the, the challenge is how to inspire people to look for grace without saying, okay, now go do that. You know what I mean? Right, exactly. So giving them ideas of this is what I did, this is what worked for me, but not necessarily dictating, well, this is the only way in life to handle things or do things, right? Give them sort of the nuggets of sharing the openness of your experience in life, but, and maybe they'll take some of that and they'll be, it'll be relatable and that, that connective tissue will be there. But at the same time, you'll uh, not necessarily say this is the only one way to do it. Right. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. I think is fantastic. That's really, you know, it, it takes a lot to write a book and be so, so real and so open when you finished the book, what was that feeling like? Was it a relief? Were you cheering? Did you go to bed for two days exhausted? <laughs> what was that like? Wendy? Ah, uh, it was, it was this feeling of like, wow, like, I think that's, I think someone is going to be encouraged by this, you know, um, it was a relief, but it was also just this like satisfied feeling of, you know, when you like finish a race kind of, and you cross that finish line and you're like, oh, that's what it felt like. Just, I was just so, um, happy. I don't know if that's the word. <laughs> Honored maybe to tell the story. Yeah. Elated. And exactly. Yeah. Which I think is a, that's a beautiful thing to have that opportunity to, you know, have that feeling in that way. Right. Yeah. Elated. Um, and, and sort of a relief a little bit because you got it done. Uh, 
how did you know how to end it? How to be comfortable with the ending you wanted? Well, I end it with um, what I'm doing now with Little House people and just how special they are to me and that they are like some of the sweetest red tail feathers of my life, kind of. And so it's just like honoring these fans. And then I also, um, I include about eight stories from other people who have experienced grace through their life. So it's almost like, okay, you just read all about my experiences of finding grace. And now let me share a couple stories from my friends. These are little house fans. Some of them, it's my sisters in one of them. Uh, a dear friend is, is also another story, but it's saying like, everybody can find grace. It's not just me, not just because I'm on TV or because I'm a little house in the prairie that I have this story, but we all have a story of grace. So it ends with that is with these eight different stories from my, um, my friends to, uh, just encourage them to even go further. So I get by with a little help from my friends. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's it. And, that, and, and with faith and love of family and all, and, uh, mm -hmm. what do you hope, um, the reader is left with, when they read this book, what it was there a certain, you know, it's your story, but again, there's a relatability to it. What do you hope perhaps people are truly left with? I hope that they are left with this sense of love and hope that Life may seem impossible at times, but it's it's just not. It's 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 can be so good if we just open our eyes to see it. And uh, it's really this encouragement to just open your eyes and be willing to look for grace, to look for the good, to look for God. It's you know they're all kind of interchangeable. Um, that that's really what my hope is. That's a beautiful hope for sure. Uh, that's a beautiful hope. Um, what was it like working on set with Karen Grassley? She was with us here on the show as well, and she was very open and very expressive and, and loving as well. Was it? Uh, was she like a motherly figure to you uh, and your sister along the way? Yes, my my mom says that she was a natural mother. And we went to her with no hesitation. Um, she was the easiest, easiest cast person for us to feel comfortable with, for sure. And Karen just is, she's just a sweetheart. Um, I, I love Karen. So um, we had, we had so many you know, times with her, we're almost always in her arms or she's feeding us in the high chair. It's, you know, her and, and Melissa, um, Melissa Gilbert, we were with her a lot too. It seemed like Melissa always kind of was carrying us around because yeah. mom needed some help. <laughs> right. So, so yeah, those two probably, um, we spent the most time with, I would say, uh, Karen and Melissa. So very special to me. How about good old Nellie Olson? Allison Argram. Yeah. We, we didn't really have much have interaction much. with Nelly, but now I have a ton of interaction with Nelly. So it's great. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't even, I can't even really recall a scene that we're together, except for maybe in season seven and eight when Ma is in the kitchen at the, um, at the hotel and maybe, uh, you know, Allison walks in and, you know, starts yelling or something. <laughs> yeah. She was perfect in that role, wasn't she? <laughs> she was. <laughs> yes, she's amazing. It's, uh, and of course, Michael Landon, who uh, again, made a lot of the decisions. What was it like working with him on the series as well? Michael was, I guess I can describe him as just warm, so warm. I, I know that most of the other kids would say he was a jokester and he was funny, Yeah, you know, expected a lot. But for us, we were so little. Uh, he didn't really expect us to do anything but what a two or three-year-old would do. So um, I didn't see that part of him. But 
there were a lot of times where he would just settle us so magically. Um, and that was, that was kind of his role for in our lives. Um, it's just this settling, warm, warm presence. And, um, he was a, a father figure when I didn't really have a father figure at home. Um, my biological father kind of left in the middle of season, maybe two, uh, not two, my second season. So that'd be season, you know, five or six. So, and I always just thought, well, he's kind of like our dad, but he doesn't come home for dinner, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Michael, Michael was amazing. Um, super great guy and brilliant actor, brilliant director. Um, I just, what he soon. accomplished yeah. is just incredible. So yeah. Gone too soon. Um, do you ever go back to where they filmed the, the location where they filmed it? I have been back there, um, but we are definitely looking forward to next year. 2024 is the 50th anniversary and there wow. is supposed to be a reunion um, celebration in March of 2024. And we will actually be out in Simi Valley, Big Sky Ranch, where you can take tours and actually see where all the buildings and they're going to hopefully have the town kind of set up with these facades and it's going to be incredible. So um, it's something that, you know, any fan can go and experience walking the town of Walnut Grove. So it's pretty exciting. The 50th anniversary, we don't even know what's going to hit us because it's, uh, I can't imagine, a, you know, a busier fall and we're not even at the 50th anniversary yet. So <laughs> it's, it's going to be wild. Yeah. Could you imagine 50 years ago? I mean, that went by in a New York minute, didn't it? 50 yeah. years ago when you think of well, somebody... I wasn't around for the first five. So, right. yeah. <laughs> so... But yes, when this show began, I'm not quite that old. <laughs> right. Of course. Nobody is. None of us are. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's, uh, but it is, it's an incredible thing. And the fact that it's still on, you know, it's in reruns. I know the DVDs came out and, and that people still have this affinity for it. And for all of you, who were part of this iconic series that had such wonderful messages. You know, there was a time when a lot of the shows, this is, I think, another reason why people love Little House on the Prairie and some of these other iconic series. And they love when we get a chance to chat with folks who are part of the series, whether behind the scenes or on camera, is, again, the fact that um, there were certain messages about life and how to handle life in, in all of these series of the time. Um, that still resonate with us today. I mean, it's kind of like they they talk about the success of I Love Lucy. Well, a lot of those those scenarios that Lucy would get involved in and and with the cast of characters were basic things that we sometimes maybe at a little bit more dramatic level on the show, but things we get involved with and deal with in our own lives, and people can relate to that. Same thing, I think, with. Uh, Little House in the Prairie, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, we're just not as humorous as I Love Lucy, but <laughs> but yeah, there's just these heartwarming stories about, you know, when someone makes fun of you or um, when you, you know, lie to your parents or when, you know, you lose a job or you lose a child or your house burns down or, you know, just all these random things that really a lot of us have gone through. So it's so applicable to our everyday lives, except for, you know, we have running water. So <laughs> we can you churn butter too, or yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's it. Well, what's a typical day like for you now, Wendy Lou? What's uh, the Wendy Lou of uh, today's life like? Yeah, I'm really, I'm, it feels like I'm either recovering from a trip um, yeah. or getting ready for another one. Um, I, I kind of have like an online store with all my little prairie things. So I'm constantly trying to 
keep up on all of these little things that I sell to fans at these events. So, and then just, you know, doing interviews like this and packing up books and sell, sending them out. It's just, yeah. Once in a while, you know, take a walk with my dog and <laughs> What's your make dog's dinner name? for my family, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> What's your dog's name? We have a, uh, an audience that loves animals. Oh, yes. Uh, my dog's name is Mo. Um, she is a Bernie Doodle. So she is part Bernie's Mountain Dog, part Poodle, and she is <laughs> wonderful. Very passionate, <laughs> very great. spunky, right? Yes. <laughs> She's incredible. That's she right. is my partner in crime. She goes everywhere with me. So, <laughs> you know, it sounds like you have a lot of blessings and joy in your life. And I love to ask all of our guests that stop by the Gym Master Show series. What are some of those blessings and joys that you have in your life that keep you doing what you do and loving life and being passionate? And now with this book, your memoir, sharing it with all of us. Hmm. The blessings. Well, I have to, uh, my family is amazing. My family, my friends, my little house castmates and my faith in God above all. So, and, and my dog Mo. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. That's so beautiful. Beautifully yeah. said, congratulations on, on everything. And, uh, you know, I think it's such a beautiful thing that you're doing because you're sharing, you're opening up about your life and you're doing it in such an eloquent way with the book. And I wish you nothing but continued joy and success and blessing in your life for you and your family, your loved ones and friends. And of course, with the rest of the cast, meeting cast with Little House. And uh, stop by again. We love to say that we keep the uh, porch light on for our guests. You're absolutely welcome back anytime, Wendy Lou, um, to share more, celebrate the 50th anniversary, whatever you'd like to do. And I hope you enjoy the time with me as much as I absolutely have with you. Yes. Thank you so much, Jim. This has been great. Oh, you're very welcome. And there's the website, gang. You can go to the website to learn all about the cool things. And of course, shop the store, the prairie items, the books, the devotional. And of course, Amazon, you can get these uh, wonderful books as well. You're the best. And thanks for uh, spending uh, the time with us. It was really a pleasure. Yes. Thank you so much. You be well. Take care now. Wendy Lou Lee here on the Gym Master Show. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. This was really a treat to share this with you. Uh, the super fans of Little House in the Prairie, but not just the super fans, those of you who love good books. I know we have a lot of people that follow the Gym Master Show series, our Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show series, where we're kind of bringing back the lost art of conversation who love these stories. And I know you love the TV stars and you love the folks from television and film and, you know, working in industry myself. I love having an opportunity to chat with uh, folks who have worked in the industry, uh, sort of speaking similar languages. But, you know, when you have an opportunity to chat with somebody who's uh, opened up her life in a beautiful memoir, Baby Grace. Yes, she and her sister, of course, playing these roles and some great behind the scenes stories and so much more. But as I mentioned, uh, Wendy Lou has a story to tell that goes even beyond this iconic television series. Uh, it's a story of faith and of love and God's grace and the love of family and being, um, you know, somebody who's always trying to look at, look for the light, the positive, values in life. And again, probably another reason why so many people love Little House in the Prairie was, of course, because of the positive nature. And uh, and Wendy Lou is really a very positive person, great spirit. She's very open about the brain tumor surgery. If you're a super fan, you probably knew about that. But maybe those of you who are familiar with the iconic series didn't know that she went through that and she came out of it. And with beauty and love and stories to tell and red tail feathers is a phenomenal book. And again, it is a, it is a lot about grace and I think you're going to absolutely love this. So make sure you go to Amazon or you can go to her website and pick up uh, your copy. And let me just throw this in as well. There is the Prairie devotional too. 
Uh, if you didn't know she had this, she sure does. Um, and I, can, I think it's a beautiful thing. So, yeah, great casting when they cast Little House on the Prairie, right? With everybody, uh, including uh, Wendy and, of course, her sister. There is a great shot of then and now with our very special guest, uh, Wendy Lou Lee, joining us here on the Jim Masters Show. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give this episode a thumbs up, a like. Leave a comment for us. We do have a comment section. Those of you who like to comment right on our YouTube channel, give this episode a like. There's a thumbs up icon on the YouTube channel. Always give it a like. Leave a comment on the channel for us. That helps us grow and shine and bring you more great content. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. That's where we house all of these fabulous episodes, thousands of them for you here on the series. This is Jim Masters thanking you for your time this time till next time. Thanks for stopping by the Jim Masters show series. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And we will see you on the next one. Spread the word about our show. Let everybody know about our series because we always have great guests and great conversations with and for all of you. Be well and take care. And thanks for stopping by the show. Cheers. <music>